Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Harry Barr of Pacific Northwest Capital. How are you today? Very good. Beautiful day in the big city. I just want you to know, Harry, that I truly enjoyed Dr. Luke Duchesne's piece about you as a, a team leader and the impact on running a public company. You've just recently announced a new advisory board member and a new VP of Business Development. Can you tell us a little bit more about these two new members? Yes, I'm very excited to have both of them on the team. I'll start with Ron Heber. Um, he spent his whole career, um, when I first met him, uh, the company was called Amplatz and they uh, became uh, Anglo Platinum. They're the largest producer in the world. And we had a long-term relationship with them in terms of an option joint venture where they spent just about 30 million on our property up in Sudbury. And Ron was the head of international exploration amongst many other things with the company. He retired, I think it was 2009, and now he is an international PGM consultant. But again, having spent his whole career uh, at Anglo with a full retirement, he's now out his, with his own company. So we're quite happy to have him both back on the team because he understands our River Valley project and uh, just to have his international experience. Now the second gentleman that just came on is our VP of Exploration. We've known each other for at least 20 years. His name is Trevor Richardson. He has been an international businessman for a long time. He's a geologist first, graduated from uh, the University in Sudbury, Laurentian and spent most of his career over in Africa and actually is the consultant to this day 20 years later and does most if not all of the work for Anglo Platinum and their exploration division. So Trevor's come on as our VP of Business Development. Well of course I always talk about how important it is to invest in the jockey and the leader that can put a team together but you also uh, just I was at the Minds and Money show everyone's bull on PGMs so, of course, Pacific Northwest Capital was first and foremost a platinum group of metals play. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, we were very fortunate. We made a discovery in 2000 and we had a big company as our partner for the longest time, Anglo Platinum. They decided to get out of the, I guess, international exploration business kind of around 07 to 08. They gave us notice and it took us about four years to buy back their interest. They'd earned 50 percent of our project. So in 2011, we bought it back and we uh, have spent now another five and a half million ourselves. We'll be drilling on October 3rd, which is next Monday again. And uh, the last time we drilled was in, it was in um, uh, the, around the spring of 2015. So we're quite excited to get back there. But a couple major milestones. This year we added on another four kilometers of the same contact that's mineralized. So we have 16. We bought it from a, a local company that had spent about four million on it. So we have 16,000 acres approximately, uh, 12,000 of it is in, is in a mining lease and uh, we have what is billed as the largest undeveloped primary PGM deposit in Canada, right out of Sudbury, so infrastructure, roads, highways, and very close to the metallurgical complex that could take our concentrate. And of course, the reason, Harry, that you're using your leadership and bringing your team together is it's my understanding that uh, Pacific Northwest Capital is kind of a project explorer, project generator, project operator, and you're also doing, what, five lithium projects. So can you tell us a little bit more about the formula you're using? Well, I mean, the project generator model, I think, has been around for a while, more exposed in the last few years, but junior mining companies can get money in three different ways. And one is we can raise equity when people want to buy our shares. But typically we try to take our projects to bigger companies. And that's what we did with River Valley. We were able to use one of the largest mining companies in the world's uh, money in terms of an option joint venture. And because of worldwide situation, they decided to back out and we bought it back. But they put $27 million in. We were the operator during all that. And what that meant is we did all of the work that was needed to be done in the project. We would make recommendations for budgets, we'd go out and do their work, and there was a technical committee where they headed up and, and agreed to what we were going to do. Uh, in terms of where we're going on the lithium division, what we're doing is we're in a new area now, and uh, we're in just out of Winnipeg, about between 75 and 150 kilometers. All road accessible, most of the projects, we've got one of the top lithium uh, geologists, uh, tantalum, uh, rare metals, rare earths. Uh, man, his name is Kerry Gailchuk, helping us. And we've acquired five properties since March, and uh, we're continuing to go out and do work on that and, and I guess move these properties to another stage where we can actually find a partner. And now we're the largest landholders in one of the most important pegmatite fields in this country. 
Well, so if I understand you properly, we have the leadership, we have the team, we have the model, we have the properties. What should we as shareholders then expect next? Because it sounds to me like, uh, and your shareholders, uh, you've shown a track record of happy shareholders. What should we expect next? Well, we're drilling October 3rd on River Valley, which has been a, a year since the drills have been there, so we're quite excited there. We're drilling on an area called the T2, which we made a brand new discovery just a year and a half ago. Nobody really cared. That's where the cycle was for the uh, mining industry at the time. Five years where the juniors kind of were on the downturn. But things are looking up now. We've had a much better spring and summer. And um, we're adding uh, a resource. What we're trying to do in the northern portion of that property is take the approximate 600,000 ounces we have to about a million. And again, this T2 zone fits right into that area. It was very good grade the last time we drilled, so we're expecting more of that. On the lithium front, we've been out all summer looking at the five properties. Each one of them will have a geological report, recommendations to go forward, and our goal is to bring two to three of those to the drill stage by January, February, March of 2017. And of course, you also have a history of, of, of creating some pretty powerful strategic partnerships and offtake agreements. Is there anything you can talk about? Well, as a CEO, I've signed 43 deals with the biggest companies in the world. And they are the, the groups that we, we want to bring into our lithium projects if we can, and certainly our PGM deposits, uh, River Valley. Uh, what's happened in the last five years, they've had their share of problems. Again, the, the corner has been turned for them, and, and I think in the next six months to a year, you're going to see big companies coming back into juniors and, and funding their projects, again, using that prospector generator model where we've generated uh, the project and they'll come in and fund it and we'll keep a substantial share, be the operator for a certain point of it and go out and try and uh, bring these properties to uh, better stages of development. Well, Harry, thank you so much for dropping by today. Well, thanks for having me again, Tracy.